history of Quest really mirrors the history of the Australian music industry. And in the early days of the Australian music industry, I'm talking about the 70s and the late 60s, we're talking an industry that developed on an island. And really in those days, it was a pretty rough island. And the thing about harsh conditions is that harsh conditions bring about innovation. If you want to survive, you have to be original. You have to adapt. You have to, you have to operate in the environment and prevail over tough conditions. A lot of our early products were built and developed in Australia because we were so disconnected from the rest of the world. If you wanted to survive, you, you couldn't survive importing imported product. It was expensive. Quite often the conditions that those products were developed in were very unsuited to the conditions that existed in Australia. So it became very common for production companies to build and develop their own products. And in the course of that learning experience, it became a great background for people to learn engineering because there really were no standards. And you ended up with a situation in Australia where there was a tremendous amount of innovation that then went offshore and really imposed itself and was adopted by the rest of the international industry. And I'm not just talking the, the thiel and small parameters on which all loudspeaker design is based. That was an Australian. We're talking over a period of time, a consistent history of innovative and leading engineering products that really came from this country. And what we're doing in Quest now is really an extension of that process. Our first design breakthrough was the one when we started the company, which was really a sub base system that could take 12 hours of hardcore techno, which at the time was quite outstanding because your average sound system at that point of time was designed for a three hour rock concert. Our second breakthrough really was a monitor system. Most monitor systems that existed at the time were really a monitor version of a front of house box but we decided to, to really look at the, the, the problems of, that sound guys had in monitor systems and we built a really effective monitor system by redesigning the components and building something very specialised that was tough. Our third big breakthrough was really when we went into the area of high intelligibility acoustics, which was the, the concept behind the HPI design, where we treated the problem of intelligibility not as a sound problem but as an energy distribution problem where we could fix the problem of reverberant environments but actually make a sound system that controlled the distribution of energy and it just meant that we had a much higher intelligibility capability with the system. Well the MX system really is an architectural audio product. It's designed really to work in a modern venue space where the aesthetics have become paramount and the current crop of uh, loudspeaker systems really do not blend nicely into those environments. So we put a lot of design work into sculpturing that finish and that design so it would just morph nicely into those spaces. But the real difference is the high IP rating because it's the only high IP product on the market that I know of that really sounds like a studio monitor and will take anything you can throw at it. Well, challenges in Australia historically have been quite tough but tough conditions do force innovation. You've got the tyranny of distance, you've got vast distances between all of the cities. Getting anything repaired is a tremendous undertaking in most cases. It forced us to, number one, make products that would be tough and reliable and that would survive in all of these, this great variety of climatic conditions you have in Australia. And of course, the other thing that you have in Australia is this innovation culture so we had a great pool of intellectual capacity that we could draw on for developing a lot of these products. Well, transitioning into electronics is really a logical progression if you're building loudspeakers. We needed to do it because we needed to have an amplifier system that would be simple, tough, reliable, and was sonically up to the performance of the loudspeakers. So it wasn't too long from building loudspeakers that we found ourselves building amplifiers. And that progressed in a natural developmental progression and has now reached a point where we'll have products like this. Now, this is something completely new, a new form factor. It's highly advanced technologically. We're talking 
two channels of 500 or one channel of 1,000 watts. It can be constant voltage. It can be any of the low in, common low impedance settings. Behind the badge, you have a whole set of filter settings that you can set up. It's a very advanced product and there's nothing like it. And this represents the direction our electronics are going in, which is to build really innovative product. Well, with software development, we're working on a couple of quite unique platforms at the moment that we believe will take us forward into the quite distant future. And I can absolutely tell you they're original solutions that will be very easy to use, that'll have great user interface and will greatly enhance the capabilities of our new generation products. Audio networking protocols are pretty much still in their infancy. There is really no hard standard and until there is going to be such a thing, it would be pointless for us to become highly invested. So as far as we're concerned, we want to see the capacity for retrofit card updates. Ultimately, the dust will settle and there will be a standard and we want to be able to have our customers fit the appropriate standard that meets their need. For us, the most important thing is listening and responding to what our customers want. Our success has been about providing solutions. And you don't know what customers want unless you're engaged. So we really value the return flow, the input we get from our customers, what solutions they need, and we work to accommodate those solutions. Well, looking ahead for us is quite exciting. Over the history of the company, we've invested a lot in technology and technical competences in a whole variety of engineering capabilities. And now we've got to a point where those, those investments are starting to be seen in really innovative product. With a build on that strong technical base, we're moving into the future with great new products that really are very positive solutions for our customer base.